Hello, welcome back to Oliver's Greenhouse. Now there's a few sore heads in the house today. We had a night, adults night of a few drinks uh, got sunk last night. So uh, I'm not feeling too bad, but uh, the wife's certainly nursing a sore head this morning. And uh, we had one extra child. So there was three kids in the house this morning. So needless to say, I was the first one up uh, feeding kids and uh, on parenting duty. But uh, we switched over now. So uh, the wife's uh, dealing with uh, the kids and uh, I've got some time for us to do a little bit of a look around the green. So I thought we'd have a look at some of my Nepenthes. We've had um, quite a lot, I've had quite a lot of inquiries and questions about the carnivorous plants recently. And it's going very much approaching autumn and winter now. So we're certainly heading into dormancy for a large number of species. Um, the Nepenthes, the light's going to be going on for those soon as well. So I um, thought we'd have a look at the Nepenthes and uh, see how they're getting along. And also uh, I've bought some bits and pieces for them. So we'll have a look at that now. So some of the Nepenthes have really come on well this year and we've had lots of new growth. Also, when it was really, really hot early in the summer as well, I had some of the, some of the pictures aborted. Uh, I'm not sure why, uh, like the um, peristone opened really early and uh, created a little hole in, um, in the developing picture and they just didn't open. So I'm not sure what that was about. It happened on a couple of my, um, couple of my Nepenthes. Uh, but as a general rule, they've lots of really continuously large um, leaf jumps lots of new pictures they seem to be doing really really well so i think they've got the climate pretty much nailed for these guys this year so we're going to have a look at my connection my collection which some of you may be familiar with already they've certainly featured in some previous videos so we're going to have a look at those um, i've moved some around as well because i found someone getting a little bit too much light obviously that that degree of diversity between the species you're going to have some which are going to like real highlight levels and those which are going to prefer you know to sort of be backed off and they do indicate very well whether or not they're getting an appropriate amount of light for those that are getting too much light you'll see they'll get like a red tinge or red hue to the uh, leaves um, and also it can affect if they get too much light i also find that the leaf size or the leaf jumps uh, will reduce as well it, just in reaction because obviously it's getting so much light it doesn't need a massive photosynthetic area because uh, it's already too bright so it'll they'll, they'll sort of back off um, you'll find the, the consecutive leaf jumps will either remain the same or start to get slightly smaller so that's a real good indicator so I'll put this Nepenthes fusca down and what we'll do is we'll have a look at this uh, uh, cross ventrata up here which has gone gone started vining and it's starting to climb across the uh, top of the greenhouse so because the backlighting is so bad up there, I'll get it down and put it somewhere a little bit lower down where we can actually have a look at it. I'll probably move it over here. Some of the Nepenthes are just to your, uh, your left. So we'll have a look at those in a minute and uh, we'll have a chat about what's, uh, what's been going on. Okay, so it's actually quite tricky to find a, uh, a location where I can position this and also get it all in shot because it's going into vining stage now. So as some of you may be aware, uh, Nepenthes are a vine. So they start off as this small rosette plant um, where the seed germinates and begins to grow as an early plant sort of uh, down in the, 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 the sort of the leaf and the humus layer underneath the existing canopy uh, they start to produce pictures and catch a few insects and uh, after they've obviously allocated enough um, residual energy um, they go into vining modes and so obviously they clamber up through the understory and shrubbery where they can get to the high light uh, levels and um, once up there they um, start to produce lots of different pictures so uh, a lot of different species will have a lower uh, type of um, picture which will have slightly different morphological uh, well they'll be, have morphological differences as compared to the upper pictures uh, so some will have bigger lower pictures than it has upper pictures and vice versa some may have completely different shaped pictures you might find that you've got a really fat bulbous picture down below and then a really thin um, sort of uh, narrow picture higher up where they reach up into the canopy of uh, wherever they, they've chosen to grow. They'll sort of ramble and sprawl around for some of them up to tens of metres so they can get really really big and this is what this guy is, has done here so it's reached uh, that point where it's got enough energy to expend in, um, in, in, in going into a vining mode and that's exactly what it's done so it started to extend the space between the leaf jumps or the stems increased and it started to uh, so it started to start grow up vining and so when it produces the um, these sort of elongated petioles uh, where the pitchers form um, these will actually wind round things uh, before opening up and becoming or inflating and becoming a new pitcher and that's basically how it clambers around so it wraps its little tendrils at the edges of the leaf um, 
around branches and other bits of foliage and clambers up. So the biggest issue with, uh, with, all, with, with Nepenthes when they do this is actually accommodating them because you go from what is, potential, what, what is initially quite a clump forming, easy to maintain plant to this long vining climbing monstrosity basically. So A, you're going to have to have the room to accommodate it and B, you're going to have to give it something to climb up. Because as you can imagine, there's not a lot inside the greenhouse for it to grab onto. So you'll find it will grab hold of things like it was grabbing hold of this bulb of filum orchid up behind my head, grabbing hold of this light, grabbing hold of all sorts of things in an attempt to climb up. So uh, one thing you can do is provide something for it to climb. I've got these little clips that just go into the, ga the, the little galleys, uh, the little gullies in the greenhouse um, frame up here. They screw in or they just twist in and then you can run a string through them. Uh, which will give them, you can create like a rudimentary climbing frame for them inside the greenhouse to give them something to clamber up with the, uh, with the eventual aim of basically having these pots on the ground and then trailing this up and letting it climb around the inside of the greenhouse. Obviously a downside of that is going to be that um, if you're going to put bubble insulation up or anything like that, you've got this plant which is growing all over the inside of the greenhouse. So obviously then putting any sort of insulation up is going to be a complete nightmare. So it's, it's the Catch-22. It'll look really awesome because you'll have this like tropical paradise with these amazing pictures hanging down. But also on the flip, it's going to make putting things like bubble wrap up, moving around the greenhouse, taking things on and off are going to be a real pain in the backside. So you've got to bear that in mind. So I'll pick you guys up. We'll come and have a little closer look at this guy because it's looking really impressive. I'm really happy with it. I mean, it's a very popular cross. You'll find this um, Nepenthes almost anywhere. Sorry, that's really vital to have some coffee after last night. Um, you'll find this one sold in um, garden centres and stuff like that. It's a really um, um, vigorous hybrid. Will tolerate um, the, a lot of misuse um, and grows great guns. So it's, it's a great nepenthe to start off with. Okay, so have a little look at this plant. Um, these are some of the uh, really old pictures. So some of them have sort of died off and gone crispy on the top some of them i've trimmed the crispy bits off so you've just got like a little pot it does sort of stay alive and it's still got some of them have still got some liquid in this one's sort of damp it's gone dry here's some of the older now actually these are some of the newer pictures but they're getting quite big they're getting i'll find some of the bigger ones here's a nice big one here you can see how large they're getting compared to my hand and they've got an attractive sort of maroony red color when they're younger uh, so the, the much smaller um, earlier picture so this is producing some rosettes from the bottom now so if I turn it round it's producing if I can position it without it destroying itself there we go so some of this, it's produced some rosettes so some new little tiny plantlets coming up from the base if I zoom in some of the smaller pictures have got uh, these sort of like little hairs almost like a little ladder for uh, insects to climb up you can see some there in the shot uh, but they lose that over time as they get bigger, but they get more of a, an attractive peristone, the peristone being this little uh, slippery ledge uh, around the top of the trap. So um, that's an in, something of interest to note. If I zoom us back out again, turn him round. So this is the, like, the first Nepenthes I got. And after this, obviously, the, the addiction or the collection started. But you can see this space um, between the leaves uh, has extended as it's gone into vining mode. It's one of the one of the really big pictures with the attractive peristone. We zoom in on that. You can have a look at that close up. You see that slippery surface where the insects drop in, but those hairs are completely gone on these pictures. They're really sticky actually to touch. They obviously produce quite a lot of uh, secrete. They secrete a lot of uh, nectar to lure insects, which. Uh, sort of a, is secreted from glands on the lid which is just I don't know what's going out of focus there we go um, so that attracts the insects in and then they just slip off the lid bloop, down inside and uh, whilst we're looking here you can actually see some of these this is what happens to the tendrils and they're searching for stuff to climb on and when they find something to climb this is just double backed on itself they'll wrap round um, before the picture then inflates that's one of the new little features that little furry nub in there so yeah that's how you can tell it's in uh, it's in vining stage 
So over on the darker side of the greenhouse, um, I've moved uh, some of my Nepenthe species, which were just getting too much sun. They were going really, really red. So we've got Nepenthes jacquelinii. Uh, this is Nepenthes uh, raffleziana. These guys get, it's too cold in the greenhouse for these. These are um, a warm growing or lowland uh, species. Well, they certainly seem to be in my conditions. These guys hated last winter. They look really rough. Um, I thought they were gonna die. Um, and over here, we've got Nepenthes gracilis. This is what happens when it's way, way, way too bright for your Nepenthes. So I bring it in, you can see this deep red color uh, of the leaves. There's a nice close up there. See how red that's gone? That's too red, that's not good. Uh, but it has produced some nice little pictures, which is uh, quite cool. Uh, this guy also nearly died um, and has really come back this year. So I don't know whether it was uh, just them adjusting to my growing conditions or the conditions just weren't right. And further over, we've got Nepenthes fusca. Uh, I bought a new uh, Nepenthes truncata. This is my little truncata, it's only a baby. Zoom in on for you. This is sort of a must-have Nepenthes for most collectors because it produces enormous traps, absolutely enormous. This is only a, a little baby. It's produced that leaf with the, the, the slightly funny coloured leaf uh, to the rear, this one here. It's produced this leaf here since being in my care. And it's got some decent sized little pictures, just the right size just to drop a wood louse in. So they like wood louse, my Nepenthes. And he lives over here because it was also getting it, it was, I wasn't sure. I haven't just really worked out what light requirements that's going to need yet. So to err on the side of caution, there's some nice fusca traps down there. If I pick you up and move you in. Now these are really, really pretty. These have got fantastic markings. They've got these sort of like purpley blobs, marks on them and a very attractive peristome colour. Really pretty little uh, Nepenthes. This guy's getting quite big. This is the biggest one I got. These all came from Dr. Wistuba in Germany quite a while ago now, I guess a couple of years, but it's starting to get big. This area is starting to elongate, so I'm not entirely sure whether it won't be too long until this guy starts to, uh, um, starts to go into a vining stage. So these guys have very much moved over here just because it was too bright. There's a little pink wick here just coming into flower there. It was just too bright the other side. They were getting too much light. Nepenthes jacquelinii is looking really good. Just zoom you guys out. I can pick this guy up. This, this is going to need a repot at some point quite soon. It's getting to that point now. This guy really hated it in the greenhouse last year. This is the its biggest picture that it's produced. Starting to get that really famous flared peristome uh, and it's starting a new picture just over here as well. Um, really did not like the heat. This is a real highlands plant. It hates heat. So last year it really struggled. And uh, this year it's rewarding me with uh, some new growth and look, just looking a whole heap healthier and happier. So I'm very happy with that because that's a really beautiful, uh, beautiful Nepenthes. Once it's uh, reached producing really large mature traps, they're just stunning. This is very much the bright side of the greenhouse now. So we're on the south facing side of the greenhouse over here. And these are my um, Nepenthes which tolerate much higher light conditions. If I move this in a little bit like this, we'll probably get a better view of what's growing over here. So right near us, we've got Nepenthes tobica. That's what these two here are. And they've got some quite decent sized pictures here with a really attractive sort of color. I'll just zoom you in. There we go. This is sort of this like pale red, pinky color um, to the pictures. That's the biggest one on there at the moment. It's probably, I don't know, two and a half, three inches probably. Still only small. But the plant's grown great guns. It's um, got quite large this year, considering it was only a tiny little thing. The leaves are probably approaching four inches, five inches long. It's growing really healthily. All these got repotted before they were in peat and gravel and various other mix with a bit of orchid bark. Since then they've moved in just pure sphagnum. I'm growing all of them now in just pure sphagnum. Well, I say pure sphagnum, it's actually some gross stone. Uh, I need to pick you guys up, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, they're, they've got a bit of growth for them, which is basically expanded, blown up glass. It just makes sure there's plenty of air for the roots as well, so they don't become stagnant. There's another tobica just here. There's a few little dead pictures just trimmed off it, but it's producing some new ones there. Going further along, I've got two Nepenthes lowei over here as well. Pick them up so you can see them. These were also from Dr. Wistuba. 
it's a bit dark I'm afraid with the light there so these cameras tiny little things about the size of my thumb really small since then they put on some nice new pictures this one here was, uh, was the one I repotted first of all try and get some light there we go zoom in so you can have a look and see it that's the next new picture not quite open this is the latest leaf jump here so much bigger leaves and these guys like a lot more light um, well they certainly can tolerate it these get maximum light in the greenhouse it's still nice and cool over here but they don't turn red so I'm assuming that's a good sign they're able to tolerate that another one that's uh, excuse me prefers the uh, higher light levels this, this is Arist a Nepenthes aristolacoides that is still in the old fashioned mix so this is in peat moss orchid bark and um, perlite and it's still doing really well got some nice size leaf jumps on it no super new pictures there's one of the pictures there and there's a new one being i'll zoom in so you can get some detail it's a little bit dark unfortunately there's one of the new pictures not quite open yet here's one of the older pictures so it ate its way out of this one look it's got a hole in the top but these have got very unique picture shapes so i'm very happy with that um, and they're both they're, all of these all, these nepenthes seem to be doing really really well over here so uh just testament to the um to the greenhouse really and settling in at last and finally being um where it needs to be uh, in regard to heat light and humidity okay so there's just a quick update on my nepenthes it's not a very big collection we've only got one two three four five six seven seven eight we've only got eight different species here and one one hybrid so not a lot i'd like quite a lot more and uh, what i would say about them is that if you are going to grow into maturity which most of us that's obviously end game is to is to you know have a mature plant is you're going to need some serious space so you're going to need a greenhouse or a really large internal grow space if, if you can accommodate them um, they're great i would say a lot of the crosses if you're going to get into nepenthes you want to start out um, with an easy to grow nepenthes because you know you might not have like any experience or be able to provide the perfect conditions go for a cross they're a lot less fussy um, you know they're not going to be name location sort of uh, species orchids which are going to have only adapted to specific requirements uh, something like this cross ventrata is, is, is bulletproof there's a thing on it it's a fly i think and um, they will grow well for you in most conditions you can even keep them in the house as house plants uh, especially if you can keep the humidity up if you find they're struggling spray them spray them regularly. spray the whole plant take it outside hang it out of a window douse it with rain water and uh, that will help to increase the humidity you end up with a happier plant also if you find they're not picturing these little fuzzy things the little tendrils with the pictures aren't uh, growing as well spray them as well keep that humidity up uh, and you can do that hold it over the sink give it a dousing and they will grow for you they are very robust especially the hybrids so uh, that's just an update on what I'm growing uh, they're all doing really well in the greenhouse this year uh, and I just need to puzzle out some way of providing a support system so that they can grow up the inside of the greenhouse because at the moment not entirely how I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do that and also keep the insulation up because I'm not going to want the insulation up all year round I want to be able to take it down and put it up so this will be to be continued I guess um, thanks for tuning in I really hope you enjoyed this video but lots more updates coming up for I know it's been a while since I posted stuff but I've just been too busy so I've got some stuff to do today uh, I've got to do some tidying up of the greenhouse a bit more ceiling around the bottom to keep those dastardly slugs out um, and also going to be putting some of my carnivorous plants out for their winter dormancy. So uh, that'll be interesting. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, remember, if you like this uh, video and you want to see more, uh, please give us a thumbs up, like down below. And if you want regular notifications of when I upload, hit the bell button as well. And um, every time I upload, you'll be notified. Thanks for watching.